One thing that has always driven innovation in guitars is the guitarist's desire to be louder. The Spanish or classical guitars had become louder thanks to Torres' invention of fan bracing, which made the bodies bigger but still retained a great tone that guitarists liked. In the US, the Martin Guitar Company that had been founded by German emigrants had taken Torres' work one stage further where they developed X-bracing of acoustic guitars, which not only allowed the bodies to become larger still while still retaining great tone, but also gave the guitars the strength they needed to be able to hold a bridge that was strung with steel strings, creating much more tension than the gut or nylon strings of a traditional Spanish guitar. These steel-strung guitars became the norm for American music, but they still weren't loud enough to compete in band situations or where other instruments were playing along with you. In the 1920s, a company in California decided to trade tone for loudness and make a guitar with a metal body rather than wood that used metal cones inside the body known as resonators to amplify the vibration of the strings and not rely on the traditional vibrating wooden top of a regular guitar. This design definitely made the guitars louder, but had the impact of giving the guitars a brash metallic tone that was just too harsh for most guitarists. They did find favour, however, with blues and bluegrass guitarists, where that tone worked well with the metal or glass slides they were using on their fingers to play the guitars. These resonator guitars are still very popular today and are produced to be used by blues and bluegrass players who still look for that traditional tone. Perhaps the most significant innovation was coming from Hawaiian music, which was very popular in the 1920s, but had major problems with loudness to play to large audiences because of how small their guitars were. Lap steels were a very integral part of Hawaiian music, and soon electric engineers started to build horseshoe-shaped magnetic pickups to add to small-bodied metal guitars that allowed the guitars to be played through amplifiers and speakers and give them a loud sound. These small guitars would lay horizontally on the lap of the player and he would use a steel bar, known as a steel, to make the notes rather than use his fingers the way a traditional guitarist would use them. Jazz guitarists took notice of what was happening with these Hawaiian guitars and they soon began to make their own pickups and attach them to the bodies of their magnificent archtop acoustic jazz guitars that they were playing. This allowed them to play through amplifiers and be loud enough to be heard in the bands that were now becoming popular all over the country. The first guitarist to really come to prominence with this style of guitar was the guitarist in the Benny Goodman Orchestra, Charlie Christian, and he worked with the Gibson Guitar Company to release the ES-150, which is recognised as the first commercially available Spanish-style electric guitar. Finally, the jazz guitarists had the volume they needed to not only be heard in the context of the band they were playing with, but be loud enough to take the solos that their bandmates had always been able to enjoy. 